Okay, we're going to look at this redbud tree here and talk about doing some training pruning on it for the future. And we're gonna have Ben Anderson, one of our crew leader foremen, work on the tree. So Ben, what are you thinking about when you're approaching a tree like this? What's your thought process and what are you trying to accomplish? Well, first we're gonna do a little analysis of the structure of the tree. Um, you know, identify what kind of form the tree is presenting and, and what we're looking to to find in the shape that it has. Um, and we're going to be eliminating a number of uh, very obvious and glaring structural issues, uh, crossing rubbing branches, um, dead, dying or diseased branches. Obviously, you want to get out there, out of there and, and, and spacing to make sure that everything has a nice space to, to allow it to develop and, and grow nice and strong and healthy and uh, receive adequate sunlight throughout the entire canopy. So uh, the first thing to do is we're, we'll just carve away some of the, the real obvious uh, conflicts in the canopy. So you can see this, this here in the interior between these two main stems, um, there's this kind of squirreling branch. So we'll, we'll get this right out of our way here so we can see more clearly some of the rest of the canopy. making nice branch collar cuts wherever we go, um, and cleaning up any stubs that have been resulting from either just prior prunings um, or broken branches. And so now we can see that we have two dominant stems within the tree. And with this ornamental, with the red bud, um, we don't have to maintain a, a single stem form in a tree like this we can have two two competing tops that can you know kind of coexist in, in the same space and and be uh, allowed to to do that or we can determine to, to have one be the dominant top and the other one subordinated so when we looked at this tree earlier we we kind of decided that this left side of the canopy would be the central and the tallest part of the tree and that this side we would uh, subordinate so that we, it would just kind of be the lower tier of the canopy and that, that's going to help too because it's it's formed a, a pretty narrow inclusion in, in the stem here and uh, that is a little bit of a structural weakness so um, if we can subordinate one side keep it a little short and stout um, you know eventually over time we might phase this out or, or we might continue to prune and work with it uh, but this type of structure is something that we try to remove if and when possible when the tree is young. The interior branch is a little stuffy in here. I'm gonna get that right out of our way. And we still wear, you can see even with uh, you know, a little tree like this, we still have to have all of our safety gear on, helmet and safety glasses, gloves, um, because you you can still give yourself a whack in the head pruning a little shade tree, a little ornamental tree. All right, so I always like to, you know, as we're pruning, step back and kind of see what things are revealing. Um, you know, it's advantageous to look at things from the inside of the tree but also to step back and take a look at the, the whole picture to see kind of, um, you know, what, what needs to come out or, or what needs to stay or uh, what have you. So you can see this, it's developing nicely. That opened up the center really well. And now as it goes up into each individual top, things get very congested and they blow out into, you know, this, this top has one, two, three stems. And then our main, comes out into two dominant pieces. So we really need to figure out what needs to be retained, what needs to be removed, what needs to be subordinated uh, to create the space that everything needs in there. Okay, we've done a little pruning and what are you thinking now, Ben? Yeah, after a little bit of consideration, we were looking at this low limb here and, and although it does, you know, 
fill in the space and, and provide some symmetry that there is concern that over time it's very close to the to this union of this main stem here and as both of these increase in diameter there's going to be not only crossing rubbing but um, you know the potential for these two to, to start fusing so we're, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that conflict uh, right now while the tree is young small pruning wounds are, are you know, much more advantageous than waiting until the tree is, is larger and we have to put in a, a much more substantial uh, pruning wound that's going to take a lot longer for the tree to, to grow over and um, reduce the likelihood of, of decay. Uh, there is also this branch emanating from low in the canopy and it's coming, even though it's coming from a lower portion of the canopy, it's arching up into the nice scaffolds above it. So our thought here was uh, it's probably a good time to go ahead and get rid of this, this branch and let these scaffold branches from above come and arch down and that will be, become our lowest limbs. Um, Some of these low branches will be temporary, but you want to leave some on in the short run to help increase the diameter of the trunk while the tree's young and small. So what's the next step? What are you thinking might come next? Well, I think we need to simplify uh, each side of the tree. We were talking about how we're going to keep this a lower tier, so kind of look at what Look for some strong structure and see if we can isolate that. Uh, this is kind of heading out into the other top and that's getting a little way. So our options would be we could subordinate or eliminate that piece altogether. Uh, Make, yeah, it's decision time. It's time to make some big decisions. So it's probably better to make some of these cuts now while the tree's young. You can tolerate it until, you know, to, and to help prevent any storm damage in the future. So it I looks like you. A little bit of a hasty cut in there. I got a little bit of a, a stub I have to clean up. But I'd like oh, to take right. a look at it before we move ahead and decide if that's something we want to retain. It looks pretty good. There's a nice balance. There's spacing in between this top and the lower tier. And the other part of that top is there's all nice spacing in there. We'll certainly have to do some more thinning on the other side, but I think at this time uh, we don't need to go ahead and, and continue remove, making any more large cuts on the side of the tree. I just want to clean that that one cut up, make a nice proper pruning cut in there. So what you can see Ben has done, he's subordinated that one co-dominant stem or mostly to take some weight off of that right hand leader so that it doesn't catch a lot of snow and ice and then it fails at this weak union. So he's going to prune the rest of the tree, we'll come back and see how he's doing. Okay, we're back here with Ben and uh, we have the finished product. What do you? What's the recap? What were you thinking on the top? Well, I mean, as, as we planned, we, we got weight and leverage out of this left side. Um, we're not pruning this, this red bud species to be a single leader tree, but there was a dominant uh, piece in the top. So uh, we just kind of worked off of that and just gave everything nice branch spacing, um, you know, cleaned out dead, dying and disease, spaced the branches nicely to balance the canopy out. Um, and then just lightly ends, you know, took a little weight off the ends because this species is known for uh, being a little vulnerable to breaking under snow and ice load. So that was another consideration we had. And then in the future, it's 
you know, it's planted uh, relatively close to, um, you know, some vehicular traffic over here on the side. So that's another consideration down the line of, of kind of scaling of the canopy. But uh, altogether, uh, it's pretty good for an initial pruning. Um, you know, kind of setting setting the the uh, setting the stage for the future. Setting the stage for the future. You know, setting um setting it up for really really strong resilient form that's that's going to be manageable down the line and and hopefully result in in smaller pruning cuts to reach those objectives so we don't have to uh, really wound this tree more than uh, needed as it, it gets older in the landscape all right perfect great job looks a thousand times better <laughs>